We are about to start the second half of the event. Um, my name is Adam Glinsky. I'm a professor in the management division. I'm chair of the management division at Columbia Business School. And I am the advisor to Jan Yahimovich, who's over there, um, who uh, won a Deming Award for some of his real field research. And so we're gonna just talk to you for six minutes about this research. Um, before I do that, I just want to give a big thank you to Kalpana, Angela, and Nelson for all they do for this event and for the Deming Fellowship and Foundation, so, the Deming Cup. Um, I have a question for everyone in this room. Are you passionate? That didn't sound very passionate. Let me ask you again. Are you passionate? So, Jan and I have been studying what passion is over the last few years. And one of the things that we've done is we've asked tens of thousands of people all over the world, on every continent in the world, a simple thing to do. We asked them to turn to their neighbor next to them and describe something they're passionate about. It can be anything at all. It can be about their job. It could be a hobby. It could be something about their family or their partner. And all we ask people to do is to describe their passion for one minute. And then I ask the person listening a simple question. What did you notice about the person when they described their passion? What changed about them? What behavioral elements were transformed? And it doesn't matter what culture people come from. It doesn't matter what continent they come from. The same behavioral elements emerge every single time someone describes their passion. I say to them, what did you notice? And they say, their eyes lit up. Or they say, they had a big beaming smile. Or they say, they became very animated, their hands started moving around. I had to get out of the way their hands were moving so fast. They say, they talked really fast, they were a little higher pitch. And then they say, they leaned in as if telling me a secret. And these are the five behavioral elements that we have diagnosed as evidence that someone is communicating their passion. It's in their eyes, it's in their mouth, it's in their voice, it's in their hands, and it's in their body. And what's most remarkable about this little exercise and the videotapes and the research that we've done is then we ask people, what happened to you while you were listening to their passion? And the answers are also always the same. My eyes lit up. I started smiling. I leaned in. And so one of the things that we've discovered in our research is passion is incredibly important as an individual motivator, but it's also an interpersonal motivator. I can't inspire others if I myself am not inspired, but my passion is essential not only for motivating myself, but for motivating others. But there's a catch, and Jan is going to tell us about that catch. Thank you, Adam. I'm uh, truly honored to be here. Companies place a premium on passion. They hire passionate employees because they expect them to be more dedicated, have higher perseverance, and to go the extra mile to help the company succeed. But passion isn't fixed like personality. It's actually pretty dynamic. Perhaps you feel more passionate now after Adam's talk than you did before. And maybe tomorrow after the dinner, you will feel less passion. Just because someone isn't passionate right now doesn't mean they won't be passionate in the future. And just because someone is passionate right now doesn't mean they will be passionate in the future. It turns out that passion comes and goes. There will be times when we fall out of passion, becoming less passionate than we used to be. And there will be times when we regain our passion, becoming more passionate than we once were. Organizations, however, treat passion as fixed. 
Instead, the research that Adam and I have been conducting suggests that we need to start understanding this dynamic nature. Currently, we do not support employees whose passion is deteriorating. Because we think passion is fixed, we tell them to leave. We're not set up to help them regain their passion. By focusing on passion as a fixed characteristic, companies are missing out on two groups of employees. First, we don't hire those who currently aren't passionate. And second, we fire those who have fallen out of passion. But falling in and out of passion is inevitable. It happens. We need to be mindful of the reality that levels of passion may vary over time, and it's completely OK if they do. The idea that Adam and I want to leave you with is that passion needs to be maintained. It needs to be nourished. Once we start acknowledging that passion can vary over time, we can start taking steps to ensure that falling out of passion hurts a little less and that regaining passion works a little better. Thank you.